So this past week, the world was expecting something major from Google, a new product announcement, a digital hub, some new software that would unify the devices of home automation and the Internet of Things worlds. And what did Google give us instead? That's right. Polish. Great. Just great. <laughs> Hey, I'm Joe Deganzik, and you're on Lighting Answers. This is the show where we talk about LED light bulbs, reviews, and project info. We give you some tips on lighting design for your home and other spaces, and we tie it all together with home automation and the Internet of Things, those buzzwords you hear in the news. Well, speaking of the news, we had some news from Google this week at their I.O. conference, their 15th uh, I.O. conference, 2015, uh, over in San Francisco on Thursday. And they introduced a lot of stuff, but they only spent six and a half minutes of their over two hour keynote talking about home automation and the Internet of Things. And people really expected them to do something much more major, much more game changing. And ultimately, it may pan out to be that way. But to be honest, I'm pretty darn disappointed at what was announced. And uh, if you're a consumer um, and you're looking for news or what you should buy on this episode, skip forward a couple minutes because I'm going to talk some technical stuff right now. If you really want to listen to it, um, then uh, please do. But uh, I'm just going to try and dumb the, some of the technical stuff down anyways. So what did they actually introduce? Now, it was rumored a number of days, uh, about a week or maybe two weeks beforehand, that they were going to introduce this thing called Project um, Brillo. Oh, I'm sorry. Our budget is so small we couldn't even afford a actual set of Brillo pads. So anyways, they literally said that they had taken, um, they took some members of the uh, the teams from Android, Chrome OS, and from Nest. Nest, of course, the uh, home automation company with um, the smart um, thermostat and the smoke detector that Google bought early in 2014. And Nest has made a few other uh, acquisitions since then. But anyways, Anyways, they literally said that they took those teams, they brought everyone together, and they polished down the version of Android that has been, you know, that is existing uh, currently, down to a version that can fit into devices like these dimmers, home automation products. But they said they want to go beyond that now. One would think, well, why is Google going so far beyond? They want to go into Internet of Things devices, battery-operated devices, sensors, you know, uh, doorbells, wireless, um, you know, detection, uh, you know, uh, devices that will detect, you know, if your window or door is open or closed. You know, millions of the de of devices. They talked about farmers. It's kind of like Farmville in real life. They said, you know, farmers control all their tractors and their crops, their irrigation. All of these are internet connected uh, devices, otherwise known as the Internet of Things. Google's core mission is to organize the world's information. So now they want to broaden that and organize all the world's devices. And they said they want to go beyond just the smart home. People think of the smart home first. People think home automation. The thing they first think about is lighting. Heck, that's why I even called this series Lighting Answers. That's the first thing that normally pops into people's minds. But anyways, so they introduced this thing called Project Brillo. It's an operating system that can fit down into tiny little devices that have little power or little memory. And it has all the stuff that's necessary. So if a device maker or someone who wants to get into the home automation or Internet of Things game, they don't want to make the software, then Google will say, all right, as long as you use these appropriate, you know, chipsets, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and whatnot, then you can put our software on it and you're good to go. And the software talks to other devices that um, that run Brillo and everything's good. You've got remote management and all of those wonderful things. And then they announced something else. Weave. You just have to imagine this is this is definitely a woven towel, but you get the picture. Weave, they want to weave all of these little devices together. Anything from, like I said, dimmers and smart home devices to <laughs> tractors, sensors, just about everything. The benefit of Weave, um, well, for Google and other um, IoT, uh, you know, and device makers, is that Weave can sit on top of an existing set of software, say, um, 
something like a you know a smart device that already exists and they want to simply make it compatible with other devices in the weave ecosystem just let's just say android but anyways so it can sit on top of brillo or it can sit on top of something else weave is basically google's version or nest they, they didn't mention nest really at all which was surprising but anyways it's google's version of HomeKit, and I hate to bring Apple into the picture, but Apple's own conference is about a week and a couple of days away on June 8th, of which they're supposed to introduce a number of their um, new uh, products and services and whiz bang things. So, anyways, Weave is a language to interoperate and talk between all of these different devices, a common language to say, all right, well, your little lamp dimmer will know this this common language that you can turn this device, you know, on or off, or it can actually dim down or brighten up, or you can, you know, use a button to kind of control it and get it to talk to your hub. And all devices would have these common language um, sort of dictionaries so that they would all be able to talk to each other and understand each other. The good thing, there's, there's good and bad to all of these announcements. Here's the bad news. The bad news is it's another protocol. It's another standard that may or may not be widely adopted. So the good news is it's another standard and it's something to um, <clears throat> kind of push the smart home industries um, forward. It, it, all of these guys, I didn't even mention, this is uh, an Insteon uh, lamp dimmer device. It's going to push companies like Insteon, and, and look, there's flies in the room, how cool. Um, Insteon, they're going to push um, uh, the organizations that uh, that manage Z-Wave and Zigbee, and a lot of the other even older um, uh, companies that make the more proprietary systems, the dealer installed ones, things like Control 4 and the old uh, Crestron and AMX and some of those you know proprietary things, there's Lutron, there's, there's so many of these devices out there and some of them ride on different technologies. But anyways, Google announcing these, um, the, the Brillo um, operating system and then the sort of common language um, framework of Weave is a good thing for the industry, but it does introduce yet another software. It introduces another stack. It introduces something else to be compatible with. The problem with home automation today is the actual lack of a universal standard. Google wants to push their standards out. Apple wants to push their standards out. And in a sense, like I said, these are good things to push the industry forward. But now we've got two more standards. You know, Apple did not introduce a whole new operating system. Google wants to kind of control the whole world. But I have a problem with Google, with any large company, even Apple. And I am a self-admitted fanboy of Apple products. But give me a product made by someone else who's really awesome, and I will jump into there a little ecosystem. The challenge is we need to get to Bluetooth level integration, ease of use, and compatibility for home automation to truly take off among consumers. It really is too difficult, and I have talked about this incessantly on this on many of these episodes, that it is still too hard for consumers to do anything but the basics. People do want to, you know, control lights and appliances and a few things, but again, Let's just say um, this is, you know, 10, 12 years ago when Bluetooth really started to come into its own, usually with, you know, some type of earbud or something that you would use for hands-free um, calling and talking with, you know, with people on your phone when, you know, people actually make, made phone calls. But imagine this. This is, you know, a pair of uh, wireless Bluetooth Motorola headphones. I use these when I work out at the gym. Imagine if there were several models of these guys that you had to pick from and they each had different compatibility um, with different devices, say your car, your phone or something because of the fact that they each ran a different framework or a different version of a Bluetooth type system. That would be terribly confusing. And that's where we are today with home automation. Now you might say, well, Joe, that's, you know, you could just go into your ecosystem. You know, I'm kind of, I play with the uh, Insteon and uh, lovely fly, 
Oh, this is great. This just makes great television, doesn't it? Anyways, <clears throat> I could just live in the Insteon ecosystem, but as I've demoed on this show, I also have Hue connected, but I kind of had to do that myself. That technology doesn't just work out of the box. You generally have to have a hub to bring those together. Um, consumers don't want hubs. They don't want to have a problem of going to the store, buying something, bringing it home, finding out it doesn't work with something else, waiting for software updates, waiting for things to, to get better. They just want they just want it to work, right? They just want to buy things, bring it home, and make it work. So this is um, me now saying to Google, all the people listening out there in the Google verse. If you guys really want your new stuff, Brillo and Weave, to really take off, and if you really believe in it, then you should make something like the Bluetooth Special Interest Group, the SIG. And what that is, is Bluetooth it's a, is, is run by a standards body. It is made up of, of a lot of different members, the founding members being companies like Microsoft, Nokia, Motorola, and whatnot. But n Bluetooth by itself does not actually make you know, sell, advertise, promote any type of actual physical product. And I have a problem with Google um, with being so humongous in all these different industries and having so much control of various sectors of our world now getting into the home automation game. Bluetooth, if you really, uh, Bluetooth, Google, if you really want this to take off, if you really believe in it and want to push it out, take uh, take your time, get all the software and the protocols right, and then spin it off as a non-profit entity not associated with Google anymore. Be one of the founding members, but let the world decide which standard is going to be the best. And honestly, I would say that to Apple as well. Apple, it's not going to happen. Google, it could happen. But anyways, Google, if you truly believe in your, uh, in your work at your software, spin it off as a separate entity, non-profit, make it like more like Bluetooth. We have to get to where home automation truly works like Bluetooth does. Your questions are what drives our Q&A episodes, so send them in along with your feedback or maybe even a product you might like us to review. Subscribe to Lighting Answers on YouTube and get every single one of our episodes right when they come out. If you enjoy our episodes, please think about becoming a supporter of Lighting Answers through Patreon or right here on YouTube. Every little bit helps make the show even better and brighter. Thank you for your support. So we've come to the end of this episode and now you're a consumer and you're saying, what do I do? What do I buy? Well, now that we have some announcements going on, we know a little bit about what Google's going to do, we're guessing about what Apple's going to do, and perhaps some of the other companies are going to also make announcements soon. I can give you some more details about what I think you should do. Google's information um, that they released about Brillo and about Weave say that it's not going to really be available till closer to the end of this year, which means there's not going to be any products except for Google's own Nest uh, products that are probably going to work with it for quite some time. That could be a problem. If you like Nest products, if you've been waiting to get the Nest thermostat, you know what? It's probably going to work with Weave and Brillo because it's owned, it's in Google's own uh, little world. So you could probably jump into that world. These devices like legacy home automation products you may already own like these lamp dimmers, these generally are not software upgradable, but the hub that you may have usually is because both Apple's spec and Google's spec for their um, these protocols, HomeKit and the Weave, run on Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and that stuff is pretty ubiquitous. So if you're looking for what to do, if you want to jump into Nest, I say go ahead and jump into it right now, but be wary because we expected that there would be a product announcement and there was none. So I am expecting that Nest is going to actually introduce something new, or Google's going to introduce something new under the Nest brand in the coming months, sometime before the end of this year, maybe in the fall season for the holidays, that's gonna be a cheaper entry because buying the Nest at 250 bucks for the thermostat is pretty steep to just jump into the home automation game as some sort of hub. So outside of that, I'm Joe DeGanzik. Don't forget to get out there and brighten and automate your world. We'll see you next time.